Hi guys, um, this is Philip Martin, and uh, this is on film, on video, and I've got a bug in my ear going, it's kind of an echoey thing, so I don't know. Also, it's I'm doing this a little bit differently today, I'm doing it a little bit later in the afternoon, we have this wonderful light coming in through this window, so if I go over here, you can kind of, you know, see there's a lot of light. So that's just one of the interesting technical things that we deal with here, is that <laughs> here in um, the... Um, the studio. Well, I was just telling somebody, God, Tuesdays are busy, busy days. And that's the day I do this because uh, if I waited any later in the week, well, I might not get it done. And if I didn't get it done, well, then it wouldn't be here and you wouldn't see it. So I sort of am trapped into the schedule. But at the same time, doing it so early in the week means that certain things happen sometimes. Like last week, I spent all this time talking to you about A Wonderful Life, which was allegedly going to be yesterday, December 10th, which since I'm doing this on December 8th is actually two days in the future, but you know, you're watching on the 11th. But um, something happened last week as we started to go to press, um, and uh, for reasons I'm not quite sure, I don't want to speak out of school, but we moved the screening of It's a Wonderful Life from December 10th to December 17th. So it's next week, and you still have a chance to see it and go to the Arkansas Cinema Society uh, website or the Arkansas Art Center uh, website, and you can figure out how to do that. Uh, I will have more information on how to do that in my new movies column because... I really would like people to do this because I'm going to be live tweeting during the film. Not that I do it that way. In fact, I'm going to have, you know, a laptop and, and do it that way. So, and, uh, well, I'm going to watch it, live tweet it, and then we're going to have a discussion afterwards. And what really is uh, sort of interesting about this is that this is sort of prelude to um, a series I'm going to do next year, and there's no details yet, and I don't have anything to say about it except that we're planning on doing it. I think the Art Center and the Cinema Society would be involved. I would be involved, and we would. And this is sort of a pilot program for that. We'll see how this works. We want to try out some software and some, you know, strategies for for doing it this way. Um, the live tweeting, which may get replaced with, you know, if we start doing a Zoom side type thing with a chat sort of thing. But I want to be able to, you know, communicate with um, moviegoers somehow. So you can always send me a direct message at my um, you know, Twitter account, which is at Borkdog, which is back there, at Borkdog, see? That's I always have that behind me, even though sometimes my big head gets in the way. Um, but... So that was what we talked about that last week. And I probably told you more about my feelings about if it's a, wonder, it's a wonderful life than uh, maybe I should have. Uh, so I'm not going to go back into that this week. Anyway, the big news this week, I think, is uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Um, and I say that because I've seen it, and it's really good, and it's Chasman Bozeman's last film and you had you get a feeling that he knew it was his last film as he was doing it and that informs his that knowledge your knowledge of his knowledge really because he was keeping it a secret but he knew how sick he was informs this your experience of viewing it. it's kind of going to be always going to be hard to divide uh, this film and his performance from the fact that it's his last performance and he was very sick when he was doing it. It's something. Uh, I don't know. I've seen the play. And it's been years since I've seen the play. August Wilson's... I think he won a Pulitzer for this. I think he won a Pulitzer in 1984 for, for this play. I could be wrong. I know he won two Pulitzers. Fences and something else. I thought it was this, but maybe not. But uh, if you've seen the play... You may think that you understand it and all that, and that's fine, you do, but the, the, the film version doesn't detract from it. It doesn't, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of times I think the movie version kind of denatures the play in certain 
ways, and sometimes that's unavoidable because you're opening it up. You know, you want to give it a a cinematic sort of twist to it, and they do a little bit of that. And I mean, there's some lovely uh, outdoor scenes set outside this recording studio where the main action plays, but it's it's still it's got the the nut of the play is intact. And there's some other stuff that goes into it. And I, I think that may be the best way to have done this because I think that one of the big attractions for... One of the reasons you can get this movie done, Denzel Washington is probably the reason it really got done because he wanted to do the August Wilson um, Pittsburgh films and then Pittsburgh Cycle or whatever it's called. And, he, and he, he's got nine of them in the pipeline. He's done a... You know, this is the Dead Fences, and this is another one. So he's got some more coming. They were going to be on HBO, but now they're going to be on Netflix. But they're also in theaters, which I think is the uh, way that Netflix is going to go with most of these uh, prestige products from now on. I think they're going to try to, uh, just a prediction that when this is all over and it's all shaken down, Netflix is going to have its own chain of cinemas. I think that's something that is going to happen. I don't have any evidence. It's just a hot take. But I think that's going to happen. We're going to have Netflix is going to have, uh, they're going to integrate that way. They're going to have their own movie houses where they can show their own product and other product. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, but that's a prediction for me. I don't make them often, but I made that one. Um but anyway, this this film is available. It's in it's in theaters now. And it's going to be on Netflix. I think on the eighteenth, maybe later. I didn't really look that up because it's not really important. Because we're rev- reviewing it now. It's like we reviewed Mank when it uh, went to theaters, and now it's on Netflix. But it had a couple. couple I, I like that. I like that. Uh, that model, because I think that there's still a market for people who want to see these things in the theater. Even in the pandemic that we're in now, I think that there's a a handful. (laughs) There's a solid mm, core group of people who still want to see these things in the theater, and I don't blame them. I would prefer to see them in the theater myself. I'm not sure I would. As someone who has not paid for a motion picture ticket in 20-something years, I don't know that I can call myself a hardcore moviegoer because I go to the movies because it doesn't cost me anything and and, and because I, you know, I like movies, but I don't know that were I not in this job that I would go to a lot of movies and theaters. I would think I would go to some because I do like movies. But I might just, you know, I, I really don't have a big problem with the home experience either. I mean, it's sort of like we've got a nice setup. Got, well, you got better wine. <laughs> and, um, you know, you got good company and pause it, rewind it and stuff like that. Well, we talk about that all the time, though, don't we? But uh, it, it's nice to have the option of seeing these movies in the theaters. And I think that Netflix recognizes that. And they don't necessarily want to do in the American <laughs> The American Movie House, uh, so I, I would I would not be surprised if they don't have that. What else have we got going on this week? Well, I don't know. To tell you the absolute truth, I don't know. There's a couple other movies opening. I have not seen them. I haven't seen uh, Midnight Sky, which is the other. This is curious. This is a, a Netflix film, just like. Um, uh, Mank was a Netflix film, and um, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom's a Netflix Netflix film, but it's not being marketed in the same way. And it's it's interesting because it's a George Clooney film. It's got a good cast. It's been posited as sort of this cross between The Revenant and a science fiction, you know, feature. I don't know much about it. I tried to get a copy of it. I haven't got a copy of it, so who knows? I'm going to do what I can to find out what I can about it, and that may be a good thing because that may give me something to write about in the new movies column, and we'll see. We'll see how it is. I don't know how it is, uh, but I would think 
that there'd be more buzz about it and there'd be more publicity going on about it. But it's opening in theaters, so that's that's something. And you'll be able to see it pretty quickly on Netflix if you don't want to go out to the theater and do that. Okay. Um, otherwise, December is like the Friday afternoon. December is to the year what Friday afternoon is to the work week. You know, there's not a whole lot going on, especially this December, whereas in a normal December, we'd have lots of holiday movies and stuff like that coming out, and we'd be talking about, you know, things like that. We do have Wonder Woman coming to, you know, um, HBO Max and theaters on Christmas Day, which will be interesting to see how that works out. I've just recently figured out how to get the HBO Max to actually play on our Roku TV, which is very cool. <laughs> I'm not... Uh, I'm not terrible. All these newspaper people always want you to believe that they're terrible with technology. I'm not terrible with technology. I can use technology just fine. Though if you've ever been in one of my life quest classes, you know that sometimes I am challenged by, you know, different remotes and things like that. I think we all have that. But I generally can figure out how to work these things out. But I couldn't figure out exactly how to get the AirPlay thing to work. And then I figured finally read the instructions and you have to you know use a qr code and link up your tv and then once you get it on there and it's one of your devices you're fine so now i can just take my ipad and flip my a lot of movies up to uh, the roku tv which is cool i still can't do it on some and i don't really understand why because it would seem to me like this would be something that would be pretty standard on your youtube and your Vimeo screeners, but apparently not. So, and the other, it's really frustrating this time of year because I'm getting six or eight or ten, you know, movies in my in in my email uh, every day. And usually, the way that works is you get a link and you link on, you hit the link, and then they send you some sort of double step authentic authentication. I didn't say that right. You know, I'm better than this. I'm just not having a good day. But, the, you know, you have a, a couple steps you go to, and you get it. Boom. You got you got the movie. And it used to be back when we had slower computers, and, uh, you know, sometimes they wouldn't work. But usually these days, you pop them right up in your iPad, and they're going. But for some reason, we're getting a lot of films, and they never send us a second part. You know, I get the invitation and then, you know, Lionsgate, I'm talking to you, Lionsgate. I'm still waiting for a couple of films that you said you wanted me to see, but you never sent me the codes for. So, come on. Uh, but we still have plenty of stuff to watch, and there's plenty of, uh, you know, end-of-the-year screeners have started to come in. They're not any of the, well, I mean, not any of the obvious ones have come in, which is really interesting. I've gotten a lot of good documentaries, Crip Camp, things like that. and But more and more often, they're coming in as, you know, as emails that you can, you know, pull up and watch the things. So it's a little bit different. I don't think that uh, I will get a big, long a carton to collect the movies in this year. Uh, <laughs> like, I've, like I've done in years past. Um, but, you know, I'm going to have a few, and we'll hold on to them for a while before your consideration screeners, and they're kind of cool to have. Um, but it's the industry's changing, and you better change with it. And I'm lucky and kind of proud of the way that we've changed in the way that we've, you know, approach our, um, our section. It's it's different than it was five years ago, and I imagine it will be continue to change in the future. We're going to start doing more DVD stuff, more VOD stuff, more um, stuff that uh, is on Netflix and Amazon Prime, and still try to do the movie, th the traditional movie things. But if we're not going to get, you know, uh, I don't know. It's it's, it's all going to be. It's all going to be optional is what it's going to be. It's not like we're going to be forced to do anything anymore. And we don't feel like we have an obligation to, you know, try to cover everything because everything is 
you can't make the you can't make the map as big as the territory. So we're going to, you know, take our time, pick our shots, do what we can. I mean, it's just amazing. Things I didn't, I, I, I talked to a couple weeks ago about this Jackie Chan movie I did not know. Nicholas Cage makes a lot of movies. But here, Jiu-Jitsu, I had no idea. And it's coming out. And with Frank Grillo, yeah, too, and Tony Ja. Yeah, see, uh, I like to get these on here because... Otherwise, they may never see the light of day here. But, uh, you know, people still make this stuff. And there's still a market for it. And there's still, you know, Film Movement, one of my favorite companies. And we're going, we're going to cover more of this stuff, Raining in the Mountain. Uh, this is a, not a film I've seen. So, you know. But, Boys and girls, it's just difficult <laughs> to know exactly how this all is going to shake out. And then we come out in next, I don't know, April, May. We may be back to something like normal, and we may have a vaccine, and we may be able to go to theaters and do things like we used to. It may not be 20% capacity anymore. I don't know. But uh, we've got to keep... Uh, <laughs> okay uh, anyway that's this week and it's almost christmas and we'll keep going on you keep going on you stay safe do what you have to do and uh tune in on december 17th if you want to watch it's a wonderful life with me thanks so much take care